objects like vectors are independent of the particular basis we choose. The components of a vector, when expressed in a certain basis, some numbers, do depend on this choice, of course. How do we relate the old components in the old basis of the same vector to the new components in the new basis, when we decide to use a new basis? Our orthogonal tensor Q, which will give us the answer, as we will see in this video. So what's the situation? We have an old basis B, which is often the standard basis, and some new basis B prime. Then we know that we can express a vector A in the old basis with AI and in a new basis with AJ prime. And then the question is, of course, given those AI, so we know the AI, how do we find the new AJ prime, the new numbers, the new uh, coordinates in the new basis? So we, knew of, we know a few things. First of all, we use an orthonormal basis. So inner product EI, inner product EJ is delta IJ. Furthermore, we know we have some orthogonal Q to find our new basis. And we can express our new basis vectors EI prime using our orthogonal Q as follows. EI prime equals QMI EM. Then two properties, because this Q is orthogonal, we know Q and J, Q and K equals delta JK. Or an alternative way to express this, the matrix of Q transpose, and the matrix of Q is the identity matrix. So we know these four things, and that will be sufficient. So we have our vector A. So A, I, E, I equals A, J prime, E, J, A prime. And first of all, we use this rule 2, where we have A, J, uh, e, J prime equals Q, M, J, E, M. That's over here. Then the next step is to take the inner product with E n on the left and right hand side of the equation. So on the left hand side we get A i E i inner product with E n, and on the right hand side we get the rubbish, and we take the inner product with the E n. Now, what do we get on the left hand side? We have E i inner product E n, which just gives us delta i n, this property over here. Uh, so we this reduce to an A n, and on the right hand side we have E m inner product E n. Taking the inner product gives us again the first rule, delta m n, and uh, simplifying we use q and j, a j prime. So now we have expressed the a n in the a j prime. Okay, if you want to solve for the a j prime, we can multiply left and right with q and k in order to uh, solve for the uh, a j prime. So we have a q and k a n and a q and k times the rubbish on the right hand side. Now the right hand side uh, simplifies using the third rule over here, q and j, q and k equals delta jk, that's what we do over here. Uh, so the right hand side simplifies to ak prime equals q and k times an. So this is mean in matrix form. Well, this first equation just says vector a equals straightforward matrix of q times vector of a in the new basis. And the second expression, we have the a k prime here. The n and the k are here the wrong way around to do the matrix multiplication. So you have to take the transpose of the matrix of Q transpose times vector a. So that is how we find the new compo coordinates if we have the old ones. So let us do a small example of this. So we take a standard basis and a new basis. Uh, with, uh, so we have e1 prime equals e2, e2 prime equals minus e1, and e3 prime is just e3. And then we take some vector a and we just took 2 times e1 in this example. So that means that the coordinate vector of a with respect to the standard basis is just 2 times e1 plus 0 times e2 plus 0 times e3, over here. Uh, the matrix of q is the uh, e1 prime in the odd basis, so 0, 1, 0. And similarly for the other columns, so there we have the matrix of Q. And then we can find our new coordinate vector A prime, which is Q transpose times A. So here we have our Q transpose 
Here we have the vector in the old coordinates. You can compute matrix and vector and you get 0 minus 2, 0. So your a1 prime is 0, a2 prime equals minus 2, and a3 prime equals 0. So that is how you can find your new coordinate vector if you have your cube and your old coordinate vector.